Good morning, I'm Todd Templin. Our first story is one of crisis and of hope. The Christian church in the U.S. is facing a serious crisis. The number of people attending Sunday morning worship services is declining at an alarming rate for all mainline denominations. This decline is having an impact not only on church programs and budgets, but it's raising serious questions about the future of the church and its ability to grow enough to stay in existence. We recently spoke with the president of the Florida Georgia District of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod at his church headquarters office in Orlando, Florida. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is the second largest Lutheran denomination in the country with just over 6,000 congregations and a little over 2 million members nationwide. Reverend Walton, thanks for joining us. First, tell us about the health of the churches in your denomination. I would like to tell you that the congregations in the Florida Georgia District of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod are strong and healthy and vital, but the truth of the matter is we know that across our Missouri Synod, 35% of the congregations have baptized or confirmed no adults in the past year. Many of our congregations have baptized or confirmed less than three in the past year. The fact of the matter is many of our congregations are in decline or have plateaued and have not done the ministry they could. How is the FLGA addressing the crisis? The Florida Georgia District has always been very mission minded. In 2008, they launched a pilot program, Transforming Churches Network, in order to reach many more people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This came as a result of a special study group that was put together in 2007, a futures committee that looked into a program called Transforming Churches Network. This program has helped to revitalize many congregations and we have seen good things come from this in our own district. Can you tell me about the results? The results among the congregations in the Florida Georgia District have been varied. Some are doing very well. Some are still growing in the process. But I want to tell you about one congregation in particular that saw this as an opportunity to better present the gospel of Jesus Christ and strengthen their image in their community. Our Savior Lutheran Church in Plantation, Florida got a vision for how Transforming Church Network could really impact their community. They got it. Here we are outside of Our Savior Lutheran Church in Plantation, Florida, a suburb of Fort Lauderdale. They have been taking part in TCN for about a year now and having great success. Let's go inside and meet Pastor Ed Nicholas to find out more. Pastor Nicholas, tell our viewers why your church decided to participate in TCN. Well, we've been in this community for 49 years and, you know, for a long period this was a church that was growing and good things were happening and then all of a sudden we hit this period where we started to plateau. And we've been doing that for about 20 years now and we know looking at the history of other churches that if you continue to plateau for a long period of time usually the only thing left is to uh, decline unless you make some dramatic change. And we saw TCN as an opportunity uh, to make the change. So what happened here at Our Savior? It was tough at first because it, it changed everything I had done for you know 30 some years of ministry and now I was going to do ministry in a different way. So tell me, what has been the impact on your congregation? It's changed our thinking and how we do ministry. We always used to identify things by looking inward. How does it affect our members? Now everything is looking beyond the walls of our church, looking into the community. How can we make a difference in, in a school? Or we've adopted a nursing home, and how can we make a difference over there? And um, we're a part of feeding hungry people in our community. So now when people come to me with an idea, I always say to them, how does it reach out into the community? Not how does it benefit us as a congregation, but how does it reach out into our community that Christ has put us here to serve? And one final question, Pastor Nicholas. Are you glad you did this? And what do you see as the future here at Our Savior Lutheran Church? I have been overwhelmed by the response. Um, we have some people, of course, who will not pr participate. Um, but the majority of people have really bought into this. And um, we have people serving in different kinds of places. And people are excited. They talk about it on Sunday. Um, now people in the community know us. They're, they're hearing our name. 
Each congregation that participates in TCN is assigned a coach who works with the congregation and pastor over the course of two years. Pastor Scott Gress is the coach for Our Savior. Pastor, as a congregational coach, how do you help a congregation with the TCN process? Yeah, the coach is uh, somebody who's involved in the consultation weekend, but the most important thing with Transforming Churches Network is really the coaching or the follow through after the consultation that people will actually begin to do what is prescribed so that there's there's follow up, there's follow through. So the coach uh, keeps in touch with both the, both the congregation and the pastor. How would you say the folks here at Our Savior Lutheran Church have done with the TCN program? Our Savior is doing fantastically well. They, when they were going through their uh, self-study, they realized that not many people really knew who they were. And that was kind of a wake-up call. And so as they began to try to fulfill the prescriptions, they began to reach out to people, they began to be active in their community, in the cooperative feeding program, with uh, the nursing home, with the elementary school, and people began to see that they were making a difference in other people's lives. And they were so touched by that, that Our Savior was uh, the church that really became important to them in, in the community. The congregational staff is vital to success of the TCN project because they end up managing the outreach ministry efforts. Some examples include recruiting volunteers, setting up events, doing follow-up, and public relations. Every third Sunday of the month, our youth group comes together at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they put together care packages, they make sandwiches for the homeless, and after the 11 o'clock service, we go over to the cooperative feeding program and hand it out to those who are in need. One of the things from TCN is that we have increased our financial commitment to the Florida Georgia District. Another thing that came out of our consultation weekend is that we should be having small groups. We call our small groups connections. TCN has come to our church and I feel like it has empowered us to be able to walk out the door instead of staying inside, which is a wonderful aspect of um, being in our community uh, and showing our Christian witness there. Our Savior Lutheran Church adopted TCN we were challenged with opportunities to have our students and our staff reach out to the community. One of the first things that we did was we realized that our partner school, Mirror Lake Elementary, would be taking FCATs. We had our students write letters of encouragement to those students and we found that they were funny and encouraging as well. One of the most important things about the TCN project at our church was getting the people to have the mindset of being concern and caring about our, uh, our neighbors and the people in the community. So I programmed music in ahead of time before we voted to start the TCM program using a lot of outward reaching music, um, songs that are contemporary in its focus so people became aware of people outside of our own building. like children and pastor told us that we should be into the community and I'm always willing to do things for the church and for children and I've gotten more out of it than I'm sure Shanique was gotten out of it. When I'm like hurt or I feel down or I need help with something or ask her questions about how does she feel when somebody hurts her. Or if I don't understand a question, I'll ask her. He makes me read, do my work, play games. We have fun together. Uh, we matched up 
some of those women from that organization that meets for Bible study, plus many of uh, the other people from the church, and one-on-one -on -one they have a child, they read with them, they do some schoolwork, some of them do artwork. We even have one of their members with a, do a service dog who's matched up with one of our first grade classes and comes every week and they do wonderful things with the dog named Morgan. So we have just a variety of activities. Well, I have only been here since November. So to walk into a school and to find out that there's over 40 mentors, it was um, overwhelming. Um, you're used to seeing two or three. In fact, sometimes when I go to meetings and say, well, I have 40 mentors, I have area directors and uh, superintendent who just looks at me and think I'm crazy. But um, since then, they've talked to me about it and I've told them that I, I can't imagine having the school now without them. That um, they come in here, uh, they come from, from the community with all this love, and they give children love. And there are some of our children just really do not have a lot of that at home. And so if there's just one person in their life, I know they can make a difference. And these people have. And that's what's so special is, is that I saw them at a mentor breakfast and here these children get up on a mic and start talking about their mentor and how much they love them. And um, knowing that there's someone here motivates those children to learn and to succeed. In the midst of a major decline in the role and effectiveness of the Christian church in America today, we have seen a story of hope and encouragement in Our Savior Lutheran Church in Plantation, Florida. The Transforming Churches Network project has brought new life, new energy, and a renewed sense of purpose as the members move out into the community to serve people in the name of Jesus Christ. From mentoring students in a public elementary school to participating in the cooperative feeding program, these church members are carrying out the charge that Jesus left for his followers to share his love and peace with all people. And that's the good news for this morning.